Thank you so much, Latvian Voices. <laughs> Hello, Riga. <laughs> it's wonderful to be here, and it's wonderful to be able to start a concert with these amazing women on stage. So we would like to start a song of thanks, and in my mother's language, Oshiwambo, you say, Ndapandula, I'm thankful.
Thank you. about because we left when I was young and then I was told by my cousins by other family members that she was an important woman in her village whenever something important happens in the community when somebody's born somebody dies somebody gets married there's always a song and I know you are the nation of song so I decided to write a song to honor her and in Oshiwambo you say, Meme Kuku. Maybe there are some Meme Kukus right here today. Meme Kuku means grandmother. And this song is called Kuku.
Thank you.
Syahin Diri.
Thank you. So, we've sang some songs, but we haven't formally met each other. So, where I'm from, you should first greet each other in your own language. And in Oshiwambo, it's very easy. Whatever I say, you say, eh? Mwatoke wapo? No, 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 no. Mwatoke wapo? Eh? Onawa? Eh? Onawanga? Yalo. <laughs> so what I asked you, did you have a good evening? Yes. A very good evening? Yes. A very, very good evening? Yes. Then you start asking about the family, about the weather, about the animals at home, in the village, and this is how you greet each other for about five minutes. So <laughs> I heard that there are quite some similarities between Namibia and, and Latvia. We also have two million people, so when you meet a Namibian somewhere in the world, it's, it's amazing, you know, you're already family. And the other thing is that we got independence quite late. So in 1990, Namibia became independent uh, from South Africa. So first it was a German colony, First World War, it was given to South Africa, and it was part of apartheid for a long time, until 1990. So music was also censored, uh, people couldn't express themselves, they couldn't use their own language, um, it was terror, and a lot of music was also destroyed. And with this project, we've basically gone to, to Namibia and looked at what kind of musical traditions do we have, because there's so much knowledge, you know, in this music about the plants, about the animals, about culture, about the pride of the people, the language, and we see it di disappear everywhere, and I don't think it's only in Namibia only, but all over the world. So many people didn't know something about Namibia or Namibian music, so we decided to go into the villages. So we flew to the capital, Vintuk, and drove 800 kilometers into the desert, the Kalahari Desert, looking for musicians, and specifically San musicians. San people, also known as the Bushmen people, are one of the first cultures of Southern Africa. So they are nomads. They're the hunter-gatherers. They are probably the first people of the earth, but also the most marginalized people, the most discriminated people. Um, they're not allowed to hunt like they did before. There are fences everywhere, uh, basically put into very, very difficult conditions, and they're not seen as people sometimes, even in their own country. So we were fascinated about the music we heard when we were doing research and super inspired, and we wanted to get to know more about this culture, about the people, and see what we can do with this music and for this music. And we traveled these different villages and found four grandladies, grandmothers, who taught us a lot of songs, beautiful songs. And we took these songs to Amsterdam, and we made arrangements, the four of us. And then half a year later, we flew back, all of us, into the desert. And we said, hello, we're back. We did something with their music and we presented our music. And to our surprise, they liked what we did. So we spent 10 days rehearsing, trying out things. Um, and, and, you know, it, it was quite a process because you can imagine there's nothing there. There's no cell phone reception, nothing. So there we are coming with, with you know, our instruments, with, with speakers. Uh, they have to stand behind a microphone and learn how to sing in a microphone. So it was, it was quite, quite an adventure for all of us. And um, we're very thankful that we've been able to do this and tour around Europe together with the album that we recorded there. And the songs that we're going to play now are from this experience. We call it, the album is called Kalahari Encounters. And this specific song celebrates the independence of Namibia. It's a play song, it's a dance song. Namibiao.
Thank you. is starting to rise. There's not too much space to dance, but whoever feels welcomed is more than welcome to There's dance. There's always space to dance.
need to help you a bit. Don't be scared, don't be scared. I'm gonna explain this, it's quite simple. Let's just do the clapping. Ta, ta, ta. Thank you so much. I think you're officially the first people in Riga to have ever clapped the Kalahari Steppe song. It, it, it's quite something. They did well as well. You they did, did well. it really well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no off clapping. Okay, so now it's time for us to sing. because we know you have a huge singing tradition and we already heard some lovely singing, but not from you guys yet. <laughs> so, I'm going to teach you um, a song. It's called Negombwe. Actually, I'll show you my instrument first. It's a mbira song and this is a mbira. It's kind of sometimes called a thumb piano. Of course, it's not a piano, so I don't like that word, but anyway. It's from Zimbabwe and the song that we're going to sing is about a rainmaking spirit called Negombwe. Um, it was taught to me by my Mbira teacher, Benita Tarupiwa. Unfortunately, she died um, earlier in the year, but it's lovely if we just sing her song all over the world. It's very easy. You need to just know a few words. So the first word is Vehama Voye. Vehama Voye. And we're going to sing it. Vehama Voye. Vehama Voye. Great. And then, Tichano Sarako. Tichano Sarako. Tichano Sarako. Tichano Sarako. Excellent. And then you just need to learn one more word, and that's Tadzoka. 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 Okay. And with Tadzoka, we're going to do a little call and response thing. I'll sing. Tadzoka. 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 Where am I? Where Tadzoka. 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 Tichano Sarako. Super. Okay, so we're going to first uh, practice the chorus. Here we go. Oops, five keys. <laughs> Ya no sarako, eri no gonari. 
Ci quampa John di te vera, di Giano Saraco. Thank you. And I'd like to introduce once again all the musicians here on stage. So Debbie Korfmacher went to, oh, there we go, Debbie Korfmacher. <laughs> she traveled to Zimbabwe, learned the Mbira tradition. She also went to Senegal to learn the kora, which is that instrument, an African harp from Western African countries. And uh, she's been an amazing addition to the band with power, singing, clapping, and all these instruments. So we're very happy to be able to be here on stage together. On my right side, this serious looking gentleman. <laughs> he is seriously good. So he came to the Netherlands to study uh, classical cello, which he also finished at the conservatory in Amsterdam. And somehow something went wrong because he's not playing in an orchestra, he's playing with us. <laughs> and we're very happy that he is. I don't know who can or who can't see uh, what kind of pedals he has here on the ground, but he has specialized in developing all kinds of sounds um, with his electric cello, and it's been an amazing addition to this group. Can I have a big round of applause for Bense Huzar. <laughs> on my right again, a very special gentleman. A few years ago we met, common friends, and we started following each other's music, and we, we started out as friends. At a certain point, we thought, what could we actually do together? Because I was playing a completely different style of music, and he was playing different styles of music. As you can see, there are instruments from all over the world. You have the Kalabash, also from West Africa. You have Darbuka, more from the Turkish traditions. You have Udu, from Indian traditions. So he went all over the world and did many collaborations uh, looking at traditional 
um, music styles from different countries, Afro-Cuban, Turkish, Indian, Raj Rajasthan, and then creating projects around it to make it, let's say, more his own, his own flavor adding, adding to these beautiful cultures that we have in a way to celebrate them. So when he met me, he said, oh, I actually don't know much about Namibia and Namibian music. Maybe we could do a project around the traditional music cultures from Namibia, which was great because this is something that I was you know, dreaming of doing, but I grew up in a city without access to this kind of music, and you have to really go to the villages to be able to, to find this music. So three years later, we actually jumped in a plane, then hired a jeep, and drove straight into the desert, not knowing who we're going to find, what we're going to do, what kind of music we would encounter. And it's been more than an amazing journey together. And uh, I would love a huge round of applause for Shaheen During. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Before you announce me, because I know you're <laughs> going to do that, I would like to say we brought something very special with us. We made two CDs in these three years. The first one is from our quartet. The other one I don't have here with me, but it's an album that we did together with these four grandmothers from the Kalahari. So these are ancient songs that we were able to learn and to rearrange with our quartet. Um, and it's, it's really been such an emotional journey uh, going through this, this recording process, getting to know each other, learning from each other, touring together, and now being able to stand here in front of you in Riga, Latvia. We would have never thought in my whole life we would ever be here. Um, but we have these CDs for sale as well. And I would like to thank the organizers from this festival, Porta Festival. Such an amazing job you're doing to bring these people together. Can we have a huge round of applause for the organizers of this festival? <laughs> And so now I get to announce the crown of our band, which is Shishani. It means crown in her mother's language, Oshwambo. Shishani Franks, she has a Namibian mother, a Belgian father. She grew up in Namibia, the Netherlands, and Belgium. And yeah. And now I now might move us. to Latvia. <laughs> <laughs> now in Latvia, yeah. Shishani. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, yes, with this last song, it was a challenge for us because we were asked to do something together with a local group. And we thought, oh my God, what can we do? The music styles are so different, like, ooh. Well, anyway, so we got the song and uh, we tried out some things and I wasn't too happy with how it was sounding. So like for two days I was in my hotel room and I couldn't sleep and then I came up with something. And in this following song, we're going to call upon the special ladies that we opened this concert with, the beautiful Latvian voices. And we're going to, let's say, create our own flavor with one of their songs.
Latvian Voices. Thank you so much. It's only because you're so kind that we came back. <laughs> so once again, the CDs are outside for sale. And this song is the title song of this album, Itala. Itala means to have faith no matter what happens. And I might say that uh, the day that we released this album, Donald Trump became president of the United States. So I think it was quite, quite relevant.
Thank you, Riga. It's been amazing. So wonderful to be here. Thank you so much.